In today's video, we are going to be looking at the Human and Social Biology 2022 Sample SBA. It should provide a guide to those persons who are still in that dark or still need some help in completing the SBA. We would have done a video prior to this on how to mark the SBA, and we're going to be doing a video after this marking this SBA. You want to follow through this SBA to see if you could pick out those errors and post them in the comment so we can have a conversation and ensure that the ASBA is achieved from this present. So we are going to be qualifying our task here by looking at what is required by the CSEC. So be reminded the project is pretty much one, not 18 like the bio students, and it should have no more than a thousand words. And as you're seeing on screen, things that are not to be included, bibliography, and it goes down to appendices. So we want to look at the project itself. So the project must have a cover page, and it tells us what the cover page prepare. It should have the candidate number and name of subject and date of submission. So we're going to look at what we have here. So we have the name of a subject, the title of a project, we have the name of a student, candidate number, and date of submission. It should have a table of content that is well outlined here. It should have a table of content. Let me fix that for you. Table of content, introduction, methodology, and presentation of data. So here we have our methodology, presentation of data, introduction, so on, pretty much in line with the CX. And the order must be maintained. The order, the lineup of your table of content, the lineup of the SBA project must be maintained. And we start the project by looking at the introduction or background or observation, whichever one you want to use. Highlighting the problem that was observed. People in a Kingston community have for years practiced improper garbage disposal. This is an unhealthy practice and is believed to be the cause of many health related issues in the community. Problem statement arising from the observation improper disposal of garbage in the community has negatively affected the health of individuals in the community. The research objective, what do we want to find out? We want to determine if improper disposal of garbage affects the health of individuals in the community. Then we move on to methodology. How did we carry out this research? We decided to use a questionnaire because of its effectiveness in this type of research. It provides close-ended questions that reduce the stress on respondents. Our respondents range from age 17 to 64. Students, employed individuals, and unemployed individuals. The process involved the respondent placing a tick beside the answer or answers they consider to be true for them. We randomly surveyed 40 members of a community. The sample was selected by pulling random sites and gate number in the community from above. It took us two weeks to collect the data as we had to read the questionnaire for some of our respondents. While this method is proven to be effective, there is still the limitation of respondents not being totally honest in their responses. This can negatively impact our results. The questionnaire asks three questions, not including the demographic data. 
Where do you dispose of your garbage? How many persons are affected by the improper disposal of garbage? What are the effects on these individuals? Then, presentation of data. Ensure that your tables and graphs and charts all have a descriptive title, as you're seeing on screen. The data here collated comes from the questionnaire that we would have used to collect the information from the respondent. Here we have some of the effects that were highlighted from the research. We would have carried out the calculation to obtain the percentage. Yes, it's very important for you to do the calculation rather than just stopping away on your calculator. And then here we have a pie chart that represents the data that was collected. Now, easily interpreted, it is saying here that there's no one from this sample who is unaffected by the improper disposal of garbage. 33% were suffering from burn eyes as a uh, burn of the eyes as a result of burning of the garbage. Then there were 38% who had uh, mosquito related illnesses. Then gastroenteritis, leptopyrosis, headache, asthma are as is indicated on the screen. After data presentation, there is analysis and interpretation of the data. The data collected showed that 95% of the respondent disposed of garbage improperly at some point, while 5% said they have never improperly disposed of garbage. A total of 50% of the respondent disposed of their garbage beside a bin or on the road. Last year, many students differed on their CXE exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXE Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today. Sidewalk, gullies, and open land accounted for 20%, 17.5%, and 7.5% respectively of the improper garbage disposal site. The improper disposal of garbage has impacted all the respondents. Mosquito-related disease or scars accounted for 38% of the effects mentioned while the burn of eyes due to the burning of garbage represented 33% of the effects. Leptopyrosis asthma each represented 2% of the effects, while gastroenteritis accounted for 6%. Headache accounted for the remaining 19%. Information obtained from the basal reader states, and here you're supposed to cite the book that you would have used, where I have basal reader, you're supposed to cite where you're getting your information from, states that individuals can become affected by various illnesses or discomfort associated with the improper disposal of garbage, most of which can cause death if not treated quickly and Properly. These include malaria, dengue, chikungunya, Zika, scars from mosquito sting, leptopyrosis, gastroenteritis, dysentery, eyes and skin irritation, asthma, fever, and I'm sure the list could continue. This improper practice also makes room for other types of infection, social fallout, economic loss, and environmental degradation. Our conclusion, improper disposal of garbage affects the health of everyone directly 
or indirectly. The largest impact came from mosquito-related infection. Now, everything here in our conclusion is coming from the observation we made in the area or the questionnaire. Everything here comes from the data that we've collated. Recommendations. There's a need for more public education campaign on waste management and garbage disposal. Increased frequency of garbage collection, increased garbage collection site. Citizens should practice composting, reuse, reduce, recycle, reduce the consumption of non-biodegradable materials and increase the use of renewable energy. The research can be improved by increasing the sample size and the number of locations sample. Reflection, what did we garner from this research? I am so enlightened from this research. I did not know there was really a problem with garbage disposal. Neither was I aware that there is a chain of other related ills caused by improper disposal of garbage, vectors, disease, pollution. I show the data to members of my community. We are all now aware of the many ills associated with improper garbage disposal. We have since organized a cleanup day. We wrote to the National Solid Waste Authority to increase the intervals of garbage collection and the number of bins in the community. We will also make a compost heap in our yards and teach others to do the same. The practice of improper disposal is a serious problem as it can cause members of my community to become ill and not able to take care of their families. Companies may also lose money and production time due to ill persons not being able to attend work. These can lead to other social ills in my community like crime and teenage pregnancy. And then the research is stopped off with your bibliography. Now, for those persons who are not sure how to write your bib, you can go to the internet and look for a template and, of course, put the data in. After we would have entered the bibliography, the next data set to be entered is the appendices. Now here, you are going to be placing your questionnaire with the question and sample of the answers. And possible if you have photographs, they can be entered here. And that would bring us to the end of the SBA and time for your teacher to do that first, second, or final marking. In my next video, I'll be pulling apart this sample SBA. So as to highlight the specifics, the things that must be in the SBA to make sure you score that A. It's not about just writing anything, but it's about answering the questions that are asked by the mark scheme. So you want to ensure that you follow for the other video that we're going to be marking this SBA and highlighting some of the ills and strong point of this SBA. That's to say, this SBA is sufficient for you to gain an A. The outline here, if you are supposed to follow it, I can guarantee that you'll be scoring an A for your SBA. I am Mr. Wilson from CSEC Biology CCP. You can find us here on YouTube, or you may find us online at tcp-academy.teachable.com. Until next time, take good care and remember to like, share, and of course, 
subscribe. Ensure you get a million of your friends to like and two million to subscribe. We'll talk more in the next one.